and we're live guys welcome to another episode of good morning crypto only here only on Ivan on Take. We are, of course, broadcasting live straight out of Stockholm, Sweden. And we do this show each and every day at 8 a.m. Central European time, guys. I come to you like an atomic clock each and every day. Today, we will be talking about something very significant. The Bitcoin price is falling. People are freaking out. People are calling crypto a disaster. Peter Schiff is already tweeting. Peter Schiff is already harassing the entire crypto space, saying that Bitcoin will be the worst investment of the next decade. You know, that the Bitcoin is the best investment of the current decade from 2010 to 2020. Now Peter Schiff is running around the intrawebs telling everyone that it will be the worst of the next decade. So people are worried. You see extreme fear in the market. People want to sell, people are freaking out and unfortunately that is how mo most people operate. They buy high, they sell low. Today we will be taking a more realistic approach because we need to cool down, we need to cool down our heads, we need to be cold-blooded and we, ne we need to think rationally. And today we will be discussing why Bitcoin is actually severely undervalued. While this is not financial advice, it's important to actually look at the different models and the different metrics of Bitcoin value. And today we will be looking at energy-based models because there is a new model that I find extremely interesting that points to uh, undervaluation. And the reason why it's interesting is because it completes the stock-to-flow model to a very, very large extent. Because, you know, the issue with stock-to-flow model, while it is amazing and while it is also undervalued right now but the issue with stock to flow model is that it is it is purely based on the production of new bitcoin so when no no new bitcoins are produced according to stock to flow the value should basically be infinite because then there is no new production and there is basically no inflation so if miners stop mining bitcoin stock to flow will actually look pretty good but obviously if miners stop mining bitcoin bitcoin is worthless because you cannot use it so this model with energy energy value oscillator is very interesting and we will be discussing it and right now it is also pointing to severe undervaluation and i will explain to you how this model works because i truly enjoyed reading about it and i do think there is a lot of value learning about energy-based model and why it is important to keep in mind and then we'll also be looking at mayor multiple and other metrics of where the bitcoin price is right now and how severely undervalued it is but at the same time it's also important to note that uh, people are scared right now and uh, as warren buffett says be greedy when people are scared and uh, be scared when people are greedy so you can ask yourself at which stage are we right now and most importantly we will be talking about the global economy as well and what's happening in the world because there is a big big movement happening and that is the revolt of the middle class happening in chile happening in uh, in so many other countries like lebanon and other countries as well right now because there is a new kind of inequality and it's not about income it's absolutely not about income it is about how the system is set up and the cars are stacked against you it is they are stacked against the middle class and they are stacked against the average working person so at the end of the day this is maybe the biggest indicator why Bye. Bitcoin is undervalued right now. But all in all, guys, a lot to discuss. And of course, I want to welcome everyone in the chat. I want to say good morning to everyone who is watching this live. I see Fabrice. What's up, Fabrice? I see Martin. I see Art Globe. I see Brian. I see D Raj, Lutzout, Usagia, Nami. Sorry for butchering everyone's name. RJ, Jamal, Cardano Green, Fat Zero, everyone, welcome to the show. Let me know where you are tuning in from. It's always fun to read the different countries, the different uh, states, the different uh, continents, because this crypto industry is insane, it's global, and it is growing each and every day. And also, guys, I hope, I hope you will enjoy this knowledge, because I have so much to share with you when it comes to these models. And understanding, really, the value of Bitcoin is not an easy thing, because when you start, there are so many misconceptions, and there is so much mis information from the media and from everyone else so it's very important to understand the value of bitcoin and there are several different models that we'll be looking at and as always let me know what you're drinking because we're drinking black coffee no milk and no sugar involved looking at the market the situation is bearish right now. Bitcoin minus 3.47 percent ethereum minus 6.9 percent xrp 7.3 Tether is pumping though, it is at uh, $1.01 with 0.4% pump. Let me actually refresh it so that we can get the latest, latest numbers. 
looking at the biggest losers in the top 10 it is tezos but tezos has been performing so extremely well during the past weeks so it's 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 not that big of a deal honestly tezos is number 10 can you imagine tezos going from basically nowhere having so much issues with their foundation and now number 10 surpassing cardano surpassing tron even tron's justin sun and the whole marketing genius behind mars uh, justin sun could not stop tezos so interesting to see the biggest winners are silverway centrality view systems stratis 20 percent 10 percent five percent five percent all in all not many winners to be honest with you just a handful and the biggest losers today are Kyber Network Synthetics. So not many uh, losers either when it comes to significant uh, losses, but uh, most cryptocurrencies are losing by a tiny percentage, three, four, five percent approximately. And as always, guys, remember that we do have collaboration with Bybit, meaning that you can get $90 for free if you use the link below, bybit.ivontech.com and sign up. And you can be long, you can be short. So even when the market is going down, people are making money by trading this short. But please be very careful when you use Bybit because you can use leverage and that's dangerous if you do not know what you're doing. So this is only for people who are comfortable with that. And you can do it with Bitcoin, Ethereum, EOS and XRP. So do not miss out if you really want to try it. But don't be stuck too long on trading. At the end of the day, you want to be building things. And that is why I'm so passionate about the Academy. And we recently, by the way, added a whole new course to our intermediate blockchain developer track, which is this course right here called Ethereum Smart Contract Programming 201. And this one is absolutely insane and huge because we're really building real world applications. And you can use your knowledge from previous courses we, we gave you to actually, for example, build applications that use oracles, basically getting uh, information from outside the blockchain. So it's, this is oracle heavy. And also we teach you how to do unit testing and other things as well. All in all, very valuable course that you can take after you've taken the intro courses on programming here. So definitely check it out and at the end of this episode we will be actually giving away one uh, to one person the whole access to academy and you can be in the giveaway tomorrow if you comment what you have learned so just comment what you have learned watch the whole video and then leave a comment what you have learned and so today we will be giving academy to somebody who commented yesterday anyway so we all know, let, let's start with the first model for undervaluation. And basically all mod models are screaming undervaluation. So let's start with the most famous model right now going around Twitter. And it is an amazing model. Don't get me wrong. It, it is an amazing model. It is stock to flow model. People love it. And right now stock to flow model points to this range 8.5 to uh, uh 9.5 to 8.1 uh thousand uh, dollars obviously we are below that we are under slightly undervalued right now but at the same time it's important to realize the flaws that the stock to flow model might have because stock to flow model is based on supply and the new production of bitcoin meaning that if it is the case that all miners stop working and the whole network freezes stock to flow model will still perform pretty well stock to flow will tell you hey man the inflation in Bitcoin is, in Bitcoin is so low because all miners are, are basically relaxing. Nobody is mining. But at the same time, you need to realize it doesn't make sense because if nobody is mining, there is no security. There is also no way to do transactions. So Bitcoin is worthless if nobody is mining. So there are some flaws with stock to flow. Even if you take a simple example, such as, for example, when all miners stop. Therefore, I think it's important to look at some other models. And, you know, stock to flow is undervalued. But another model that I find very interesting, there is also... Uh, important in this context of uh, Bitcoin and, and historical Bitcoin prices and how we can try to see which parameters and which market forces really affect the Bitcoin price the most. Uh, I found this one, Energy Value Oscillator. And this is a, a new model by Charles Edwards. He posted it uh, just, you know, a few days ago. It was in this blog post that I will show you. And yesterday he said that, hey, Bitcoin's price as a percentage of its energy value. So Energy Value Oscillator is all about taking the current price and and comparing it to how much energy is being put into the network. And I will tell you why it's important. It's very important. It's very important to count the jewels, the actual jewels, believe it or not. And today you will see how much more efficient the mining has become in terms of jewels. But anyway, if you look at the energy being put into the Bitcoin network in terms of jewels, and you put a dollar value on that, and then you compare that dollar value, that energy dollar value to the actual dollar value of Bitcoin, right now we are undervalued. 
right now we are severely undervalued as you can see and and sometimes we are severely overvalued as well because sometimes the price just skyrockets by the by, but the energy input into the network doesn't so all in all i'm not saying that this is the perfect model there are some uh, some aspects that stock to flow model covers better compared to this model statistically stock to flow model has a bit better r2 as you will see soon but when we will be speaking about the actual blog post so r2 the basic basically the statistics statistical correlation between the Bitcoin price and the predictions of the model is a bit better in stock to flow but theoretically this model also makes a lot of sense so let's let's uh, talk more about it let me explain it to you so at the end of the day there are different ways to look at value and this model proposes uh, that we should be looking at energy input into the Bitcoin network. And today, the value should be approximately 11.5K if we follow this model. The price of Bitcoin should be 11.5K. So why is, why is energy input so important? Well, this is how we can define supply and demand, and especially the demand, because all prices, all markets are basically supply and demand. And even though something is scarce, such as Bitcoin, it doesn't mean that it is valuable, because there are many altcoins that are worth zero, absolute zero. Or like, like he said in this blog post, there are thousands of altcoins worth below $500. The whole market cap of the altcoin is below $500. So scarcity by itself itself does not mean uh, that does not mean uh, value and so therefore what he talks about here is the fact that you need to be actually looking at how much people are putting energy into something because that can tell you approximately how much how much value it has consistent high levels of human effort are generally linked with demand because if we look at over several years that people are working hard to create something for example like bitcoin and they still keep working hard it means that they get some kind of reward out of it it means that somebody on the other side is buying it so you can you can see it as a measure of demand because the energy input wouldn't be as big if there wasn't any demand so that is why he is saying that consistent high energy of human effort are generally linked with demand and that is why although bitcoin is scarce it's not enough for it to be valuable but because bitcoin is scarce and at the same time all of these miners are spending millions and millions and millions of dollars to create new bitcoin and they have done so for over 10 years, it means that there is demand. It means that energy input can be linked to demand. So then he explains further that when energy is dedicated to a task, the supplier of energy, the worker, expects there to be a demand for their effort, as we just discussed. When a supplier sees growing demand for the fruits of their labor, they will work harder in order, in order to get um, a greater benefits. And so this is exactly how the war for Bitcoin's hash rate has been fought, and this is the argument for Bitcoin's energy value. Consistent energy input represents a balance between supply and demand. So while this might not be clear the first time you read it, how can energy actually have anything to do with the market value? They seem separated, <clears throat> they seem separated, but in reality, there would not be constant energy input for 10 years if there wasn't any demand. So important thing to realize. So, for this reason, great increases in market price typically result in long-term increases in committed energy and therefore increases in Bitcoin energy value. And so, therefore, energy value is connected by the invisible hand of the market to price and volume. So, this is the important thing to understand, that energy at the end of the day is connected to price and volume. And so, to calculate what the energy value of Bitcoin should be, we need to know how much joules are being put are being put into the network. And joules is the measurement of energy. Another me measurement of energy is calories. So you know that when, uh, when you're getting bigger, you get in size, you eat too much junk food, you eat too many calories. So calories is a measurement of energy. I mean, surprisingly, many people don't know that. When you ask them, what, what, what is calories actually? I mean, what do calories measure? They have no clue. But but calories do measure energy you get too much energy into you you get a bit bigger you get a bit fluffier unfortunately that is how that is how the biomechanics of the world operate uh, but another way to measure energy is joules and usually in physics and in uh, mathematical calculations, in, <clears throat> in engineering, you don't use calories, you use joules. So calories is for biology, joules are for engineering and calculation and mathematics and models like this. So 
An important thing to mention is, of course, that you cannot just compare giga hashes because giga hashes don't give you a good representation of the energy being put in. And the reason is because you look at this chart and you see how many joules per giga hash were needed through the times. And it's, a, and it's an amazing picture. I mean, look at this. In 2009, you needed 10,000 joules from your electric um, output, from your electric outlet, in order to do one giga hash, all right? And then the mining equipment became more and more efficient, so it started to go down. And people realized that you can mine so much better, you can mine, mine using this new hardware, this and that. And then suddenly, we went from 1,000 joules for one gigawatt, giga hash, to approximately, what is it, like 50 or something, 70. Uh, oh, oh no, it's actually log logarithmic. Well, to a very small number, maybe 20 or something. So we went from here to here, a significant drop on a logarithmic scale. So this drop is absolutely insane. So what happened in 2013-14? Well, ASICs were introduced. So when ASICs were introduced, it means that now you don't need as much energy to do the same amount of hashing, the same amount of um, of uh, mining and then it improved 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 and as you can see now you need like 0.1 joules to do a giga hash can you see this development it's absolutely mind-blowing how far we've come in just 10 years when it comes to mining efficiency so why are, are am i telling you that well you cannot measure giga hashes you cannot measure how many hashes the network is producing you gotta be measuring the joules and so how do we measure joules well it's a bit more difficult because different mining hardware has changed and we don't really know exactly the efficiency of all mining hardware. So what this guy did was that he just took historical hardware and then he just uh, saw, uh, uh, he checked whether that hardware had specified the energy efficiency, basically joules per giga hash. And then he compiled the entire set of different hardware. And then through time, he, he was trying to measure how much joules were put into the network and also how much people paid regarding uh, regardless of where they are he basically came out with a with an average of this this is the fiat value this is the fiat value or the fiat factor that he's using in his formula. So this is just, you can think of it as a magic number, so to speak, to convert the Bitcoin energy into a Bitcoin value, an actual, actual dollar value for one Bitcoin, according to this model. And he has come up with this number by measuring all of this, measuring how, how efficient mining hardware were, how much electricity costs in different regions. And then he has come up with this number that you can use in his formula, this one, uh, in order to calculate, sorry, this one, in order to calculate the energy value of Bitcoin, regardless of where the actual mining is happening. So this one is very important. And according to this model, the value right now should be approximately 11.5k. And obviously, this value will change if miners stop mining, because if it is the case that... Um, that miners stop mining, there will be less energy put into the network and this model will change. Then the price will actually change as well. And the expected expected price will change. So it is being, being dependent on the energy input. So energy input can fall at any time. So if that happens, the the price will probably follow as well. At, at least that is historically so. So here he took historical data and he put his um, energy model on that historical data and he came up with an R2 of 80%, meaning that there is a good, good correlation between his data and historical performance of Bitcoin based on this energy model. So 80% R2 is very good. It is not as good as stock to flow, which has 88 or something. It has more than 80, but still very, very high, uh, but still very interesting to follow. So that was the first two models I wanted to mention. Stock to flow and energy and both of them are undervalued another model that many people follow is of course the uh, mayor multiple the mayor multiple right now is at 0 0.71 and historically if you if you accumulated uh, below 2.4 you were profitable historically uh, so what is the mayor multiple well it's basically what the bitcoin price is in relationship 
to what it was during the past 200 days. So Mayor Multiple is basically taking the current Bitcoin price and dividing it by the 200 moving average. So it is, it is a very simple model that Trace Mayer uses, and I think he's the one that truly popularized it. Yes, it was created by Trace Mayer. Right now it is at 0 0.71. And the, maybe the biggest, the biggest signal of them all is just how scared people are. Just how scared everyone is right now in this market. So all in all, make you what you want out of it but obviously nobody is feeling formal right now and when nobody is feeling formal right now it is a good idea to dca not financial advice but do not make big bets dca dollar cost average small bets every day when you make big bets you are putting yourself in a position that if the price goes against you, you will feel stupid. You will see big red numbers in your portfolio. And so when most people see that, they sell because they don't want the, the psychological pressure of being underwater. They don't want to see red numbers. So they buy high and sell low. Unfortunately, that is how it is. What is happening in the chat, guys, before I move on to the next topic, which is, in my view, one of the most significant uh, topics of them all right now, because there is a big, big inequality created in the world. And this is why you do see so many protests happening in the world right now. And uh, it's not about income. It's absolutely not about income. It's about how the system is being set up. But I want to say hi to, to the chat because uh, I've been preaching for a few minutes and uh, let's see what the chat says. Got to get some energy. You, you gotta get some calories. Is, is, <laughs> is that what you mean? Hello, Ivan. Xerxes. Hello. Hello, hello. Hi, Ivan. What what is there in place to prevent miners? Oops, sorry. Uh, what is there in place to prevent? Oh man, I lost your co uh, comment. W where was it? Over there. What is there in place to prevent miners holding investors to ransom, charging exorbitant transaction fees? Uh, do you mean the Bitcoin uh, uh, users? Well, it is a free market. Look, uh, where is your comment here? Uh, so. If one miner comes and says that now I need this transaction fee, some other miner, miner will come and say that, uh, well, I will take your transaction now because miners want to make money and miners are distributed. They're not one single entity. So all in all, there is no way to really hold ransom. There is no way for a miner to say that now you have to pay up this big amount because at the end of the day, it is a network where anyone can participate. You can participate. If, if you are a miner, you have hash power to produce the next block. Uh, you want to make money on block reward, but also on transaction fees. So you will take the transaction fees that the other guy doesn't want to take because it is too low of a fee for him. But probably he will take that. He will take any transactions he can get. The reason is because he has spent all the money creating the block, mining the block. So why shouldn't he include transactions in it? He's just missing out on revenue. So there is no, no point in doing that. Hey, Bernard. Nice. Thanks. 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 I appreciate it. I appreciate it. $5. It will be enough for a coffee for sure. A nice coffee. I, I, I will use it well, but I need to use it quickly. As always, you know that all fiat goes to zero, absolute zero. So you got to be quick. You got to be quick. Love the show. Dublin. Checking in. Nice. Shout out to Dublin, to Ireland, all, all the crypto family in Ireland. Is it possible to run a full lightning node in your phone? That would be revolutionary. Uh, unfortunately, it's not very practical. And while technically everything is possible, technically everything is possible, your phone is a very powerful computer. So is it possible? Technically, yes. Uh, practically, not really, because your phone will sleep. It will put your lightning node as a background task. And lightning node needs to have connections and it needs to be, it needs to be active. So that's the issue. Uh, guys, before we move into this important topic of inequality due to central banking, I want to remind you guys that we do have a podcast now. So many people have requested this for so many so, so many years, really. Uh, ever since I started YouTube, people were asking, Ivan, can you get a podcast? Because I don't want to watch here on YouTube. I want to listen. So now you can do that. You can find on Spotify, on, Spotify, on Google, on SoundCloud. You can find all the links below. Soon we will be on Apple. <clears throat> we will be on... Oh, sorry. We are already on Apple. I just didn't add it. But yesterday, Fabrice told me that we are on Apple. So check that out. And also you can use your own app if you want by adding RSS feed, which you can find below. So guys, when you're working out, you're at the gym, you are just having a walk, you're cooking food, you're cleaning your house, you're cozying with your friends or watching a movie, whatever, have some information in the background. Listen and educate yourself whenever you can, because knowledge is power, especially in these times, especially in these times of bear markets where you got to take positions. And there are some significant players taking positions like Kraken. I will get into that. But anyway.
Let's talk about this. There is a new kind of inequality. This is actually from NPR. It's quite interesting. <laughs> so this is not even from crypto. This is from NPR. So uh, there is a new kind of inequality and it's not about income. So they're talking about the fact that the middle class is being uh, abused across the world. The middle class is being abused. And it is true. Unfortunately, it is true across the world. The middle class has to bear the burden of everything, of the highest taxes, of uh, being this person that works all their lives. Unfortunately, this is how it is. And it's very tragic. And many people feel cheated. They go to great universities. They get that education. They have the diploma. They have diploma they show to their grandmother. The grandmother is so happy to see diploma. They cannot get a job still. They're still uh, very, very underpaid. And even if they have good jobs, it's still not fulfilling for many people. Why? Because you still are in a rat race. And so the reason why that is, to a large extent, is because the whole financial system System is set up to take from the poor and give to the rich. But obviously, there is not a lot to take from the very poor. People who live on welfare and on social programs, they don't have anything to give. So therefore, it is mainly the middle class that is basically giving away all their money to people who have good banking connections, who are close to the printer of money, they're close to the production of money. They can get cheap loans, buy real estate, buy stocks. We've been talking about this for so many times. But what's important right now is that we do see movements across the world. So maybe Chile is the is the latest one because they proposed a 4% hike in metro fares, as you remember, and then the whole Chile exploded with protests because it's enough. It's enough, said the middle class. We can See, we can not handle another increase. Middle class is paying the highest taxes today, and uh, they are being responsible for the entire well-being of, of a nation to a large extent, to a large extent. I mean, obviously, the businessmen who create the businesses, they do a lot as well. They do maybe the biggest thing when it comes to creating jobs, to actually creating opportunities, but they are being a bit more strategic. So when you create jobs, you take risks. And when you take risk, you, you are very rewarded if you are successful. So you can really propel yourself to, to the upper class and, and become wealthy. And that is amazing. That is how it should be. But this is not taught in school. I mean, ideally this would be taught in school, but it isn't. Instead in school, you you get uh, taught that you should go to work and work every day and be good and and put in the hours put in the work and get your diploma all of that all of that stuff so unfortunately many people get wrong information from the start meaning that they get into these jobs where they work so hard they work so hard they put in the hours but also they pay the highest taxes why because nobody told them that instead you should be creating opportunities and and businesses and wealth but if you just go get your diploma you work hard you pay the highest tax and now they also want to to increase your metro fare and then everyone starts uh, freaking out and this is what we're seeing so bad educational system is number one <clears throat> but most importantly it is lack of financial education and how the system operates. Because if people knew how the central banking system operated, they would revolt against that long time ago. And this is not something that uh, you see politicians talking about. This is not something you see uh, governments talking about. Mainly politicians talk about taxes. They should talk, uh, tax the rich. Unfortunately, what they're doing is just taxing the upper middle class. They're not really getting to taxing the rich because, look, it's not really possible because then these guys will move and take their jobs somewhere else. You gotta have these wealthy people in your country. So just taxing the rich mean, mean, means taxing the upper middle class and they are already paying a lot. But all in all, nobody is talking about the fact that central banking is actually redistributing the wealth from poor to the rich through the fact that you are being diluted, your fiat is being diluted. When you, you your savings account in school, they teach you, you gotta save, man. You gotta save up for a black day, for a rainy day. Well, guess what? At the end of the day, it was better to spend. Looking historically, it's always better to spend in our fiat central banking economy. It's always better to invest. It gotta be good spending, of course. You gotta invest, but you gotta be, uh, be leveraged in many cases. You gotta use your banking connections to get more cheap fiat so you can leverage and, and invest. And this is something that most people are not taught. No, they're not taught at all. And the system right now is not really functioning. We've seen 400 billion in repo operations that the Fed will do in the coming months. It's absolutely insane. It's absolutely insane how much they will do in the coming months. And so this whole system is really, really being built on very 
unstable grounds and therefore it is due to a big change and maybe this is the biggest sign of uh, bitcoin undervaluation i think this is the biggest sign of bitcoin undervaluation because we need hard money we need hard money right now as soon as possible and most people in this world need hard money otherwise they are being diluted each and every day so guys this is the main message this is maybe the most powerful topic of them all that we're seeing right now and uh, i think you should check out this article i will post it in the in the chat i will not read the whole thing but all in all it, it it says a lot it says a lot about the state of of affairs and where the world is uh, is, is is going so all in all, you don't want to be middle class. Many people have this dream of being middle class, but at the end of the day, it's uh, it's not a good goal, to be honest with you. So this new generation of inequality is interesting. It has to do with what you would call micro inequalities, the things things that I perceive as unfair in my country and my uh, community, in my society. Uh, but they sometimes miss the biggest issue, and that is the central banking. So there are many inequalities, but the issue is the central banking. And p not many people are talking about it. Let's see, I saw a few donations. Valdemar, thank you so much. The most important thing in this world is time. Thank you, Ivan, for sharing your time and insight. Of course, of course. Thank you for being here. Obviously, you're sharing your time as well with us and your comment and your financial energy of five US dollars. Thank you so much. Uh, and also, Valdemar, nice to see you, bro. Nice to see you, bro. Bitcoin price is low. Everyone talks about buying it now to get rich. But I feel like we should discuss how we can actually use it as a currency. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, using as a currency or as a macro asset, that is the big question. And I mean, obviously, nobody can answer exactly how it's going to be. I see Ed right, right now writing a lot about BSV. So Ed might give you some inputs on, <laughs> on, on, on the role of BSV in that. But all in all, uh, whether Bitcoin will be used as a transactional currency on an everyday basis or whether it will be used more as, as a macro asset, we'll see. We'll absolutely see how that develops. Uh, but it's important to look at fundamentals and, and the issues we see in the world. For example, the topics we just discussed and why it's so important to look at what is actually wrong in this system. Because all bad systems, all inefficient systems will uh, will come to an end sooner or later while the human uh, human uh, really this this whole human race that we're part of and the human civilization while we make bad decisions sometimes like for example in the 40s we made some really bad decisions and it resulted in catastrophes where millions of people lost their lives if you look at long-term progress we are we're making steps forward we're moving forward so where there are inefficiencies sooner or later they will be resolved where there are inequalities or something that is really messed up sooner or later it will be resolved we humans have this tendency of of improving of moving forward and finding a better and better solutions if you look at all statistics they are better they are better now than 20 30 50 100 years ago so therefore it is very clear to me that even the current financial system with all the inefficiencies it has an expiry date it has an end date the reason is because we will move to a better system, we will move to a more efficient system, we will always find the most optimal, optimal way to do something sooner or later, sooner or later. The question is when and how, how much time will pass until we find that solution. And that is where most people get it wrong. That is, I mean, that, that is the best advice uh, you, can, you can get. When you make predictions, never put a date on them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Peter Schiff. While he is right to many, to many, to a large extent, and he is right when he's talking about many things, he's wrong on the date. He's always wrong on the date. He has been preaching about a financial collapse for 10 years right now. So while he is fundamentally right, doesn't mean that he's right right now. While he's fundamentally right about the state of affairs in the financial system, doesn't mean that he will still be relevant when that actually happens. It might happen in 5-10 years. So who, who knows? Who knows? Anyway, what is going on in the chat, guys? Greetings, Howard. Nice, Howard. Howard is spreading a lot of uh, memes on, on Twitter. I, I saw them. I saw them. Nice. Nice job, man. Uh, the big innovation is actually the economics of being gold, but better it's stock to inflation ratio. Yeah, so we discussed stock to flow at the beginning of the episode. And most importantly, we also discussed the energy value because this is a less understood model and a very new model that I find very interesting. Now, giving away Academy today, 
the academy goes to Vaskili One, who said yesterday that he buy uh, he buy, buy the dips or he said buy the dips. Time to get a second job and hodl. I learned that OTC is not the same as open market; it is more private. So yesterday we discussed about Hobby and how the Plus token are trying to exit through Hobby. They're trying to cash out through Hobby. So Vaskili. Uh, Vaskili, how do you say it? Vaskili or Waskili or Waskis, I don't know. Waskili. Email me at contact at ivontech.com. We will be adding you to the academy and invest in yourself, man. Take the time, learn about JavaScript, learn about C++, all from scratch, from absolute beginning, all from scratch. Then move on to Ethereum smart contract programming, EOS programming, and, and, and further. If you want, there's also Bitcoin programming. So you can learn how to program on Bitcoin and on Lightning Network and so many other great things. Everything from scratch. And each and every month we do an exclusive live stream. So if you have any issues, any questions, you don't understand something, you can use the forum anytime. We will answer to you in the forum quickly. Or you can answer me personally during a live stream. And I will, I will, uh, I will... You can ask me and I will answer. Did I say you can answer me? No, no, no. You can ask me and I answer. You ask, I answer, okay? And so if you're completely new to crypto and blockchain, you just found this channel, then take this. Blockchain 101 and you can take uh, Blockchain Bitcoin 101 and Ethereum 101 if you're completely new. Uh, but it, it will also teach you a lot about mining, UTXOs, uh, account model, EVM, and so many great things. And guys, please invest in yourself. Just like uh, Kraken right now is buying Circle's OTC desk, they are expanding in a bear market, they're taking market share in a bear market, you gotta expand as well. You have to invest in yourself. I, of course, recommend you to invest in, your th in yourself by learning. And the best way to learn is the academy. I mean, we have 20K students learning each and every day. And by the way, this is increasing dramatically. We had such an increase of students during Black Friday. So we need to keep updating this all the time. It's no longer 15K. And uh, it's growing at an exponential rate, this thing, in the bear market. And this is so great to see. And uh, whenever there is an important, uh, an important uh, industry event, for example, like Cardano, like Tezos, we will be adding it to the academy. So now we're working hard with Tezos. We're working hard with Cardano. Cardano, it will be in our academy very, very soon. Okay, what's happening? What's happening, guys? Uh, oh, the battle of uh, BSV and BTC, I see. Uh, I don't bet like that. I'm not a gambler, okay. <laughs> the rich get richer because they understand the corrupt system. System. You gotta play the game, yes. You gotta be close to the printer. Unfortunately, how this is how it is. I wish the the school will teach, would teach that to most people. But if you are in crypto, you understand it. Crypto is the best school. Crypto is the best school because it teaches you about economy. It teaches you about technology. It teaches you about trading. It teaches you about regulation. It teaches you about uh, risk management. It teaches you about how to actually not lose everything, how to actually not, uh, not be burned in markets. And so you get so much education in just a few years in crypto. The same education would take you 10, 20, 30 years to get in the traditional financial space. That is why crypto is the best school on everything, because it's a combination of so many different uh, topics and so many different uh, industries, so many different industries. So in the traditional market, you have 10 year cycles, approximately, it will take you 10 years to live through a bull market, and then a few years to get to the bear market and get through the bear market. In crypto, we do that every year, basically, there is like some kind of bull and bear cycle, even this year, we saw like a mini cycle from three, thousand to 14k now to six seven k approximately so you gotta be in crypto if you really want to get educated on so many different things and to take a step further i do recommend the academy go to academy.ivontech.com uh let's see what else what else good day from australia thanks thanks michael i appreciate you i appreciate you huge shout out crypto twitter is awesome it's awesome but also it can be a bit uh, uh, a bit childish it's uh, good and bad good and bad Good day from Australia. Love. Oh yeah, I already read that. Smash the likes. Zauma. Big shout out to Zauma. And also big shout out to Fabric King. Fabric King right here. Uh, big, big shout out. Fabrice, what's happening? BSV with Giga Blocks. How can this be decentralized unless you can propagate blocks on light speed? Uh, people, see, when, when, when Ed enters the chat, there is always a big debate about BSV, but that's welcome. That's welcome. You, you, you can, you can debate BSV in the chat if you want. That is completely fine. But, uh, I, I know also Ed make like, ma made a fan video of me. He has a, a fan, you know, video of, uh, of my channel. So I appreciate that. 
<laughs> I'm joking. He did actually roast my channel. He called me a BTC shill or something. Like a, you know, blockstream lizard. I, I, I don't remember exactly, but, but it's fine, Ed. It's fine, it's fine. I, I will not copy strike you, okay? It's, it's, it's okay. As long as you're respectful here, uh, it's okay. BTC can be used in a $40 phone, phone in Venezuela. Can, uh, but we need to use Lightning Network to adopt Bitcoin as a currency. How can we do that if we're poor with bad internet? Yes, so see, that, that is a good question. For everyday transactions, it will not work. Uh, mainly it works as digital gold and as uh, preserving your value. But everyday transactions, I, I mean, I mean, honestly, you know, it's not, it's, it's not possible right now. It's not possible right now. But it is possible if you don't want to be completely, completely running your own node. I mean, you're saying that, you know, Lightning Network, you need to, uh, you, you have bad internet, this and that. But in, at the end of the day, you don't need to use your full node. There is, for example, Blue Wallet, you can use someone else's Lightning node. Or if you really want to use your own node, then you can uh, connect the Blue Wallet to your own node as well. So that's possible. So if you want to get practical, you can use Lightning Network even with poor internet. But obviously, if you have poor internet, you cannot use any cryptocurrency if completely decentralized and sync the entire blockchain and verify all the blocks. It will not work. So you gotta have light uh, clients like SPVs. So uh, when it comes to Lightning Network, do try, for example, Blue Wallet and others. You don't need uh, good internet for that. Uh, and it will still work as a transactional currency. But if you want to be completely decentralized, you have your full node, you have your full Lightning node, in, then it will obviously be difficult right now. Uh, what else? Uh, BTC will never be used for day-to-day -day currency because of Gresham's law. Some reason gold, same reason gold will not be used uh, for day-to-day -day currency. Uh, it's true. As long as there is uh, bad money and good money, bad money will be preferred in everyday transactions because nobody wants to spend their good money. You want to hodl your good money. That is why people do not want to spend uh, as Bitcoin right now. They want to hodl. They don't want to be the next pizza guy who spent uh, hundreds of millions on, on a pizza. So therefore, as long as there is worse currencies, uh, those will be preferred in everyday transactions. So even for example, look at the current market cap. I mean, you could use like Bitcoin Cash or Litecoin or something. People are really not hodling Bitcoin Cash. And that is kind of the whole, uh, the whole idea with Bitcoin Cash that you should spend it. So it's amazing. You can hodl Bitcoin while spending uh, Bitcoin Cash. And by the way, I prefer Bcash. I really like Bcash better. Bcash is good marketing. It's catchy, rolls of the tongue. But I will be respectful and say Bitcoin Cash because it's really not about the name. So, I mean, for transactions, you could even use XRP Man. It, 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 is, it is very quickly. It is very quickly and people do not really see it as, you know, digital gold that will go up in value a lot. Although there is XRP army, but generally, generally, there is a lot more fear of spending Bitcoin, way more fear, because people are scared uh, of being the guy who spent like uh, several millions buying a coffee for, for a few Satoshis. So yeah, all in all, this is how that is. Craig has nothing to do with how BSV works. Uh, well, I mean, man, it depends on how you look at it. It's uh, look at where the miners are. Look at look at who is mining it. It's um, several different ways to <laughs> to look at it. Uh, fiat reserve currencies, throughout, but at, at the end of the day, uh, I think everyone has what they wanted. So. Uh, I don't really see the, the point of debating anymore. You want Bitcoin SV? Man, there is Bitcoin SV right here. It's number nine on coin market cap. It's $80. So you can use that. It's big blocks, uh, mining, very centralized. <laughs> you can say that. If you want kind of like Bitcoin SV, but you want uh, Roger uh, instead of, you want to be Team Roger instead of Team Craig, you can be in Bitcoin Cash. And I know when I say Team Craig, uh, Ed will not like it, but uh, I mean, it is true. It, it, it is true. Uh, or you can have whatever. So everyone has what they want. Uh, amazing world. Amazing world. And now people are even more educated, so they don't think that Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash is the same currency or something. So yeah. Cool. Congrats to everyone. Everyone has what they want. Uh, there will be many layers on Bitcoin in the future. Later, we'll look back how we spend everything on the base layer. Probably, probably, probably. The, w the way Bitcoin will work is impossible for us to, to say. 
It's impossible for us to know, impossible for us to predict. It's like talking about the internet in the 70s. Yes, you could be the, the biggest mastermind in the world in the 70s. You know all about technology, you know all about how this new, new era of digitalization is on the horizon, how we will probably have this worldwide network of computers. It was quite easy to see if you were in the industry. You would be able to see that, but for you to predict that there will be a guy in Sweden pumping, pumping his tricep, pumping his tricep, talking about cryptocurrencies, talking about Bitcoin, which is a currency decentralized, talking to people across the world. We have 1K uh, users right now watching it. I mean, in the 70s, how would you predict that? Even if you knew all about the internet, there, there would be no way for you to predict that because you have the mindset of, uh, of the 70s. And in the 70s, this would be completely impossible. This, what you're seeing right now, is completely impossible. Instead, maybe you thought, hey, maybe we can do some mathematical calculations on computers. Maybe we can share those calculations with each other through computers. But how do you predict predict the, the development of a technology 30 years, 40 years into the future. So all in all, uh, it's impossible to predict. But what is possible to predict, guys, is that you should be keeping in mind the most imp important pump. As Fabrice says, the most important fundamentals of the day, it is not the Bitcoin pump, it is not the XRP pump. It is even not the BSV pump that uh, Ed really wants in the chat. I, I, I know that he wants a BSV pump. The most important pump of the day is actually, as always, your bicep pump, guys. Always invest in yourself. Invest in yourself first, bicep, tricep, and even sh you can do some shoulder like this. You can do shoulder like this. And uh, that is the main point I wanted to make. Anyway, guys, smash the like, smash the bell, smash the um, subscribe button, share the video with everyone, and I'll see you all very, very soon. I see you all tomorrow at 8 a.m. Central European time. Have a great day. Enjoy your day. I hope you learned something. Hope you learned something. Once again, let me have my minute of uh, shilling. And uh, today we're shilling Bybit. So if you are a trader, this is only for professionals. Be careful with Bybit. You can long, you can short, you can use leverage. So only for professionals. And you can be short, you can be long with Bitcoin, Ethereum, EOS, and XRP. And if you use bybit.ivalontech.com, you go to this link, you get $90 for free as welcome. And please also check out Akazimi. This is the most important thing. You need to go from tracing to biddling. That is the only way. That is the only way. Thank you so much for my moment of uh, promotion. And I see you all tomorrow, 8 a.m. And goodbye, guys. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. <laughs>